Welcome to a lesson on negative exponents. The properties for negative exponents are given here, but let's refer to them below where they're easier to read. And let's begin with this first property, a raised to the power of negative m equals one over a raised to the power of positive m. An easy way to remember how to apply this property is to write a to the power of negative m as a fraction with the denominator of one. Whenever we move an exponential expression across a fraction bar, it changes the sign of the exponent. So here if we move a to the power of negative m down to the denominator, notice how it changes the sign of the exponent. Here we have a to the power of positive m in the denominator. Now we'll justify this property in a moment, but let's review the remaining properties first. Next we have one divided by a raised to the power of negative m equals a to the m. Again, if we write a to the m as a fraction with a denominator of one, notice how if we move a to the power of negative m across the fraction bar, or in this case up to the numerator, again it changes the sign of the exponent. We have a to the power of positive m in the numerator. Now this property here is not given above. It's just a combination of these two properties, where if we want a to the power of negative m to have a positive exponent, we'd move that down to the denominator. And if we wanted b to the power of negative n to have a positive exponent, we'd move that up to the numerator. So a to the power of negative m divided by b to the power of negative n is equal to b to the power of positive n divided by a raised to the power of positive m. And then finally our last property, we have the fraction a over b raised to the power of negative m is equal to b over a raised to the power of positive m. So if we have a fraction raised to a negative exponent, if we take the reciprocal of the fraction, it would change the sign of the exponent. And this is really just an extension of a property that we already learned when we have a power raised to power in combination with these properties here. So now let's take a moment and justify these. To justify these first three properties, let's consider simplifying x to the second divided by x to the fifth. Well, we know x to the second is equal to two factors of x, and x to the fifth is equal to five factors of x. So simplifying in this form, Notice x divided by x simplifies to one here as well as here. So we know this simplifies to one over three factors of x or one divided by x to the third. And now if we simplify this using the division property of exponents, given here for review, because the bases are the same, we would subtract the exponents. And again, it's always the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator. So here we'd have x raised to the power of two minus five which equals x raised to the power of negative three. Well, we know this must simplify to one over x to the power of positive three, and therefore this must be the same as x raised to the power of negative three, which in fraction form would have a denominator of one. And as we said before, if we move this down to the denominator, it changes the sign of the exponent, giving us one over x to the power of positive three. And then to justify the second property, once we accept the first property, we know that one divided by a raised to the power of negative m equals one over one over a to the power of positive m. Remember this fraction bar here means division. So instead of dividing by one over a to the m, we would multiply by the reciprocal. So this is equal to one times a to the power of m over one, which would just give us a to the m given here. And then again, this third property here, not given above, is just a combination of these two properties. And then finally here where we have a fraction raised to a negative exponent, let's consider two thirds raised to the power of negative two. So for two thirds, we can think of this as two to the power of one divided by three to the power of one. And all this is being raised to the power of negative two. So here we have powers to powers. So we know we multiply the exponents, which would give us two to the power of negative two divided by three to the power of negative two. In this form, to change the sign of the exponents, we'd move two to the negative two down to the denominator, which would give us two to the second. We'd move three to the negative two up to the numerator, which would give us three squared. And this actually is the more useful form when we look at our examples. But three squared divided by two squared is equal to three halves raised to the second. So notice how here we have two thirds to the negative two, which is equal to three halves raised to the power of positive two. Now let's look at some examples. 
We're asked to write each of the following with only positive exponents and variables represent non-zero quantities. So for example, in 1a we have x to the power of negative three. Let's write this in fraction form with the denominator of one. And now to change the sign of the exponent, we would move the exponential expression across the fraction bar, or in this case, down to the denominator. So this would give us one divided by x to the power of positive three. Just notice how we just applied this property here, where a to the power of negative m equals one over a to the power of positive m. This is now considered simplified because we have a positive exponent. For one b, notice how we have x to the power of negative three in the denominator. This is already in fraction form, so if we move x to the power of negative three across the fraction bar, or in this case up to the numerator, it's going to change the sign of the exponent. So this is going to be equal to x to the power of positive three. Our denominator would be one, which we don't need. So this is just equal to x to the power of positive three. For one c, again we have two to the power of negative three, which is equivalent to a fraction with the denominator of one. So we'll move this down to the denominator, which will give us one divided by two to the power of positive three. We can evaluate two to the third, which is equal to eight, so this simplifies to one eighth. Next we have four fifths raised to the power of negative two. And I'm going to show this two ways. First, first we can think of four fifths as four to the first divided by five to the first. And since we have powers to powers, we'd multiply the exponents. So here we have four raised to the power of one times negative two, or negative two, divided by five raised to the power of one times negative two, which is negative two. And now to make the exponents positive, we'll move four to the negative two down to the denominator, and five to the negative two up to the numerator. So this will give us five to the positive two, divided by four to the positive two. So we have five squared or twenty-five divided by four squared or sixteen. The other option, again, is to apply this property directly, where if we have four-fifths to the power of negative two, this is equal to the reciprocal of five-fourths squared. And now from here, again, we can think of this as five to the first over four to the first raised to the positive two power, which gives us five squared over four squared with the same result of twenty-five sixteenths. So there's a couple of ways to simplify this example. For E, we have three x to the power of negative four. We need to be careful here because this is equal to three to the first times x to the power of negative four. So the three has a positive exponent, the x doesn't. So in fraction form, we have denominator of one. So the three to the power of one is okay where it is because it has a positive exponent, but x to the power of negative four must be moved to the denominator to change the sign of the exponent. So our numerator stays three, or three to the first. Our denominator is now going to be x raised to the power of positive four. Now f is different because the base three x is in parentheses. So in fraction form, we'd have a denominator of one, so to change the sign of the exponent, we would move this down to the denominator. So in this case, we'd have a numerator of one and a denominator of three x raised to the power of positive four. Inside the parentheses, we have three to the first, x to the first. And since we have powers to powers, this is equal to one divided by three to the power of one times four, or three to the fourth, times x to the power of one times four, or x to the fourth. Three to the fourth is equal to eighty-one, so we have one divided by, or one over eighty-one, x to the fourth. Let's look at some additional examples. Here we have p to the negative four times p squared times p. This p has an exponent of one. Well here we're multiplying, and the bases are the same, so we add the exponents. So this is equal to p raised to the power of negative four plus two plus one which is equal to p raised to the power of negative one. Again, we need to have a positive exponent. This is equivalent to p to the negative one over one. So we'll move this down to the denominator to change the sign of the exponent. So here we'd have one over p to the first, or just one over p. 
for b, let's go ahead and put the variables in fraction form. So these would have a denominator of one. And notice that two-thirds doesn't simplify, so we have a two in the numerator and a three in the denominator. And now for a to the negative five, we want to have a positive exponent, so we move a to the negative five down to the denominator, which will give us a to the power of positive five in the denominator. And then we have b to the negative three in the numerator, which we'd move down to the denominator to change the sign of the exponent. So we'd have b to the power of positive three in the denominator. And here we have c squared in the numerator. Notice c has a positive exponent, so c squared is fine in the numerator. So we have two c squared divided by three a to the fifth b to the third. Now there's a couple of ways to simplify c. Notice how we are dividing and the bases are the same. So let's apply the division property of exponents first. So we'd have d raised to the power of negative two minus negative seven, which is equal to d raised to the power of negative two plus seven, which simplifies nicely to d to the fifth. The other option for c would be to move d to the negative two down to the denominator and d to the negative seven up to the numerator. If we did this, we would have d to the seventh divided by d to the second, and now applying the division property, we would have d raised to the power of seven minus two with the same result of d to the fifth. Either method works. And then finally for d, we'll first simplify four six, then we'll simplify the t's and then the u's. So notice for four six, there's a common factor of two. Four six simplifies a two thirds. There are two twos in four, and three twos in six. So we have two thirds. And then we have t to the negative 10 divided by t to the negative three. That'd be t to the negative 10 minus negative three. And then we have u to the first divided by u to the negative one. That'd be u to the power of one minus negative one. So simplifying, we have two thirds then we'd have t to the power of negative 10 minus negative three, which is negative 10 plus three, or negative seven. And then we have u raised to the power of one minus negative one, or one plus one, which is two. Let's write the variable part in fraction form. So we'd have a denominator of one. And we need t to have a positive exponent, so we'd move t to the negative seven down to the denominator u to the power of positive two stays in the numerator. For our final step, we'd have a numerator of two u squared, and our denominator would be three t to the power of positive seven. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.